the set with you say, I just wanted to, I always bring up this uh, part of my life. The song is so near and dear to me. I was going through some major stress at work with a person who was a, a work bully. She was incredibly mean to me. She made my life just terrible. I hated going to work and she was just so mean. And the song came out about that time and I felt like that song was, God really used that song in my life. That no matter what the world said, he loved me and I was good enough for him. And I didn't know the way God was going to use that situation. It was such an ugly situation. But I will tell you that God takes the ugly, he makes it beautiful. She is now my office mate next doors and she is so kind and so sweet. And you know, people are going through things in your lives and sometimes you don't understand what it is and you are just the backlash from that. And so you just have to wait it out and just let God handle the situation and take that ugly and make it beautiful and trust that God has control of the situation. As we sing this, remember that it doesn't matter what the world says about you, you are loved and God loves you so, so much.
Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to the gathering service this morning. Um, this is a wonderful, wonderful way to come and worship the Lord in just music and a, and a message. I uh, would like to just say happy Sunday to those of you who are streaming us and Happy Blessed Sunday to those of you who are here uh, in person. I just love to hug all your necks. It really means a lot to me. Uh, we need to pass the joy of the Lord on. Um, I wanted to share a couple of things with you. Uh, Martha Henning is back. We are so grateful that she has recovered and is back with us. Uh, we need to lift up in prayer Rich Johnson, who is a new member, and he is also a pastor, and he will be very active with this service. Uh, he is at home recovering from having a mitral valve uh, uh, replacement done so keep him in your hearts and prayers he thought he was going to be here this sunday yeah right <laughs> anyway and also i wanted to let everybody know that the beautiful flowers that are here this morning in our gathering uh, are from brad barrows in honor of his mother who passed away recently and uh, we've all been keeping brad in our hearts and prayers and we hope that you will continue to do so uh, because grief is not something that just vanishes overnight so we need to remember to continue to lift brad and his family up in prayer um, and always if you would uh, give me one moment of personal time please lift up our incredible praise team they work so so hard to use their musical talents and their voices to praise the lord god and so i am so grateful for them a few uh, announcements that I want to make. Don't forget to send your 7th and 12th graders to uh, Church United Methodist Church Youth Fellowship. They meet every Sunday at 1245 and they are well fed. I tested last week and so I know <laughs> I, I got a spoonful. Um, anyway, uh, you would enjoy coming. Children's Sunday School has officially begun the 24-25 season. Children are now divided by their grade level, pre-K and kindergarten and first graders through third graders and fourth grade through seventh grade. So they make up three different classes and Sunday school will begin at 1015 every Sunday as, um, as the adult classes do. Good Neighbor Connection will be meeting today at Bracken Methodist starting at 330. The church office is gonna be closed tomorrow for Labor Day and Tuesday for a staff planning day. The United Women of Faith are having their annual luncheon and meeting on Wednesday, and all women are invited. And actually, we call it United Women in Faith, but men are invited as well. We don't mind. We'd love to have um, spouses come and join us and see what we do. So join us at 1130 on the first Wednesday of the month. Um, the monthly vendor event comes up uh, this next for Saturday of the month and junk in a trunk is going to be held Saturday here from 10 to 3 and this event includes more than 80 vendors and food trucks there will be activities for families and children and our junk in the trunk be sure and stop by there because everything that we sell there uh, the proceeds go from this ministry towards the children and youth programs uh, and don't forget that we do have an offertory basket in the back I think they would take away my United Methodist credentials if I didn't say that. So let's begin worshiping the Lord our God with music. Really quick before we do that. Oh. Uh, really quick, we were hoping that maybe, uh, sorry, Jamie, uh, Joe asked me oh, if you, would, right. <laughs> if you oh, would say a little bit about your trip down uh, to Mexico. Oh, thank you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> it was her. He tried to throw my mom under the bus, and I said, if I say my mom, she'll kill me, so. <laughs> have to come up here, I have to come up here. I don't need a microphone. Yeah, you, you do. gotta speak on the mic so, so, the, so they can hear so you on Facebook. Facebook. Can't hear you. On Facebook. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so yesterday, we, uh, we ended up taking a trip down to uh, Mexico in the Piedras Negras for a, and we visited an orphanage, the um, Hogar. I think it was the House, ha of House of Hogar. And they house about 22 kids there currently, and they've had up to 40. Uh, it's really a nice little facility, but you know, it's everybody could use a little help. So it was a great experience because you go in there and the kids are just, uh, the kids range from ages, I think, three or four up to 19. And they're all in different spaces right now. Some of them are just dying for any kind of interaction with an adult. They'll run up and grab your hands, walk you around. 
The other ones are very standoffish, but curious at the same time. So it was a great trip. Uh, we got more to come. I think we've got some plans laid out of some things that maybe we could do um, from all different skill levels, from construction to just companionship. So if there's an interest, reach out to Joe. Connection with the Colonial Hills and UC? Oh, yeah, there was. So we're connecting with is it Alamo Heights? Yes. Methodist, I think it's. And Universal, and Universal uh, Methodist. So, all right. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. <Jerry. laughs> Let's praise. Be careful who your friends are. <laughs> Let's praise our God with Build Your Kingdom here. <laughs>
big bike And they even brought a rock to his own bike you think twelve outsiders nobody would have chosen you Change the world for the moral of the story Everybody's got a purpose So when I hear that devil start talking to me Saying who do you think you are I'm just a nobody Trying to tell everybody About somebody Who saved my soul Ever since you rescued me You gave my heart a song to sing And for the world to see Nobody but Jesus for the world to see nobody but Jesus So let me go down, down, down in history As another blood bought faithful member of the family And if they all forget my name, that's just fine with me Living for the world to see nobody but Jesus
sing before we go to uh, the sermon is how he loves us you know it's hard to imagine that our God loves us despite all we've done he knows all the little dark secrets that other people don't know about us all the mistakes that we've made 
all the judgments we've made, even when we haven't said them out loud, all the little thoughts, those dark, dark thoughts, and he still loves you so purely. As we sing this, just focus on just how much he loves you and how you don't have to be worried about anything or anxious. He's got it for you.
I want you to remember this. He's not just another name from history. He's the very creator of life itself. And I want you to hear these words that I'll be reading from the message uh, from the Gospel of St. John, beginning in the first chapter. The Word was first, the Word present to God, God present to the Word. The Word was God, in readiness for God from day one. Everything created through him. Nothing, not one thing, came into being without him. What came into existence was life, and the life was the light to live by. The life light blazed out of the darkness. The darkness couldn't put it out. Thousands of years later, no matter how many armies have marched, no matter how many trials the church has faced, the light can never be extinguished. I want you to remember that. But there has been a problem with the darkness. We've talked about that before. And I want to tell you something that I think is really vitally important. We can't get complacent about our faith because complacency is a silent killer of all that is sacred. We've often wondered, or at least I have, how the Israelites could wander around the desert for 40 years and not quite get it, you know. Um, I'm training a puppy right now, so I'm beginning to understand that a little more. <laughs> but, um, but basically, what happens is a cycle. Things are going really, really well, and we're loving God, and we start to take it for granted. And we begin to get a little complacent about it. We don't pay attention. We don't uh, we might skip church one Sunday or we might miss a Bible study or, uh, or we might forget to do our morning devotional. We get, we get complacent and that becomes the silent, deadly killer of all that is sacred in our lives. Because you see, a light needs to have energy and we human beings need to stay plugged into the light. You get me? I'd love an amen here. We need to stay plugged into the light. Amen. There we go. All right. Y'all are doing better than my puppy. I'm so excited. <laughs> but I want to tell you that what is really vital for us to understand can also be found in Romans. And the messages that came across this morning from the praise team were just so applicable. And so I want to read to you from Romans chapter 10, beginning with the fourth verse through the 10th. The word that saves is right here as near as the tongue in your mouth. It is as close as the heart in your chest. It is the word of faith that welcomes God to go to work and set things right for us. This is the core of our preaching. Say the welcoming word to God. Jesus is my master. Let me hear it. Jesus is my master. Jesus is my master. It's the word of faith. That is so important, embracing body and soul, God's work of doing in us what he did in raising Jesus from the dead. That's it. You're not doing it. You're not doing anything. You're simply calling out to God, trusting him to do it for you. That's salvation. With your whole being, you embrace God setting things right, and then you say it right out loud. God has set everything right between him and me. God has set everything right between him and me. You didn't have to do a thing. Just believe. 
God has set everything right between you and me. So quit worrying about it. If you're worried about going to heaven, if you believe in Jesus and you're trying to walk in his footsteps, just remember those words. God has set everything right. And that is why today you and I are invited to the table to receive our God's feast, to be received into the embrace of Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Emmanuel with us, El God. We talk about it being God with us, but if you really were to speak it correctly, it's with us, God. Emmanuel. El. You see, El is God. That's the, the Hebrew word, the Hebrew letters for God. El. With us, God. And today, we are invited to the family table. Today, we are going to feast and we are going to celebrate God's goodness by tasting and seeing how good our God is. The God who gets us who understands us, who knows we are imperfect beings. But if we trust in Jesus, if we are striving to follow after Jesus, walking in his footsteps, if we are willing to open ourselves up and stay plugged in to our Lord, we will always be welcome at the family table doesn't matter who you are, where you've been, or what you've done. Those of you at home, grab a juice and a cracker, anything you want. You are invited to the feast as well. And I would like to ask Heather to come up and help me with communion. On the night our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was to actually be arrested and abused and mistreated and led to a trial and ultimately crucified. He dined with his friends. And I've told you, his friends were just like us. Sometimes having trouble doubting, sometimes misbehaving sometimes wanting to be prideful and important and sit at his right hand or his left hand. Just plain, ordinary folks like us who once were one way, but now we're different. Have that t-shirt and I love it. And the reason is because of him. And he invites us to come and take part in this family feast. Gracious and holy God, I pray that you will pour out your spirit on this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that they can be for us outward and visible signs of the inward and visible grace. Make it real in our lives, reminding us that we are part of the family. In Jesus' name. That night he took the bread and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, said, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he took the cup, and after lifting it up and giving thanks to God, he said to his disciples, Take and drink. This is the blood of the new covenant that says, I want you to love one another as I have loved you. I want you to love one another, every other, as I have loved you. And so you who are here claiming the name of Jesus, I invite you to come forward and receive this gift. I would ask that the band would come forward first.
because I like it better than any. So <laughs> you dismiss us, ma'am. Well, we'll finish up with Whom Shall I Fear, if you guys are good with that. Clay's over here trying to uh, play the Indian. And I got lost. No, <laughs> he got lost. <laughs> and this made me know we make faces up here, and that's when you know we make mistakes. <laughs> anyway, you guys have an amazing, amazing week. We love you all. At home, come see us. We'd love to see your beautiful faces. 
Please be kind to yourself and be kind to others. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>